Hi, this is Doug from Rusted Wrench Garage. Today we're going to talk about oil filter bypass. Bypass or not to bypass? Only you can answer that question. So, what I want to talk about is, you know, on the on the GMs, you got this little uh, assembly here that goes up underneath your oil filter, and your oil filter actually screws onto this here, and there's a bypass plug that's right here. And uh, they say that that bypass plug, that it'll activate it, you know, like anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds of pressure. If I'm right, you know, I could be, I could be wrong, but it's, it's pretty low oil pressure. But what, what happens is if your oil filter starts to get plugged up and st plugged up in order to get oil to your motor, it'll push that bypass valve down. That's got a spring and stuff in there. And let oil go ahead and circulate, flow through your motor. Well, the question you have to ask yourself is, you know what, we plug these things up on our drag motors because we don't want any of the contaminants from the oil and stuff to be, you know, get down inside here and uh, start, you know, eating up the rest of the parts of the motor. So uh, the key is to make sure you keep your oil filter, your oil filter clean and your oil changed. Uh, you know, you can use whatever filters you want. I think the best ones out on the market are Wix and BG. Uh, I personally run Wix filters myself. So, you know, but I was questioning that, you know, should I use the, should I block off the bypass or should I use the bypass? You know, and I think really if you've got a fresh motor, let's say you just rebuild a motor and uh, you're wanting to break it in, the first 20 minutes of that break in is the most critical part of that engine, of that engine's life, especially if you're running a flat tap at cam. Because if you was to wipe the cam out and uh, some of those particles, in that from your cam go through that bypass get sent through your oil system and into your crank you can eat up bearings you can eat up your crank and it could cost you some uh pretty uh pretty big problems so you know a good thing to do is if you had two of these you could use one that that, that is blocked off and uh they 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 just bolt with two seven sixteenths bolts up in the block so it'd be easy you know, to pull your filter off or before you put it on, pull that out, put the one with the with the bypass block off on there, put the screws back in, then put your filter in there. Then during your break in, you don't have to worry about that because your oil filter is going to trap everything. Now, I saw, know some of you thinking, well, your oil filter is going to catch that all anyhow. But, you know, GM built that in there because they figured that there'd be some of us that it wasn't going to be real good at changing our oil and our oil filter. And if the oil filter starts to get plugged up, then that bypass would open up and go ahead and let uh, let your engine get oil. Now, that could be critical if you live in a cold climate and you're running a thick oil on your first startup. Uh, you know, uh, that would probably be handy for that. But we run these in our drag motors, and, and I like to uh, block them off. But the question I had, and maybe one of you guys could answer this, is if this thing opens up at, at 10 to 15 pounds of oil pressure, and if you look at your oil gauge and you're running, when you first start up, you're running 50, you know, 40, you're running, uh, you're running those kind of oil pressures, and especially if you're running a, uh, a high pressure pump, is that valve really ever closing? You know, could it still be open all, a little bit or is it closed all the way? That's always kind of been my question. And I don't want those contaminants getting in through my oil system. I want my filter to be able to catch all of it. So I run those, I run the plugs in there. And to put the plug in there, it's uh, it's really pretty easy. You know, it, it uh, I've already done this one, you can see. But, you know, if you if you look at yours, you'll see like a little metal, a little metal clip right here. And uh, all you want to do is you just take your screwdriver and you'll put it in there and pop that out and it'll come out in the, the little uh, valve in there and the spring and everything will pull out and this will just all be empty. Then you just take a tap, whatever size it is that you need. I used a, uh, I used a, a, 12, a half by 20 and just screw that up in there, screw your tap in there and tap some threads into that thing and then take a, a, that's a pipe thread tap and then take a plug and you screw the plug in there and you want to get it pretty tight. I mean, you don't want to, stress it out or crack something but get it pretty snug uh, even if it was to fall out you know it's up made it up against the engine block it's not going to go anywhere but you don't want it falling out so you don't want to put that in there pretty tight uh, I wouldn't use Loctite because I've seen Loctite you know as it dries it gets a little crusty and you definitely don't want that being sent through your motor so and then you could buy if you don't feel comfortable you know uh, blocking yours off you could buy them I think Moroso sells one that uh, that's already got the, by, the bypass blocked off made into it. 
but uh, or you can just take yours and, and it's uh, pretty simple to do. Just tap it out, screw it in. So I don't know. Maybe I'll get y'all's thoughts. What do you think? You know, to uh, bypass or not to bypass? That's the question. This is Doug with Restoration Garage. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and please subscribe.